So in this episode, we're looking at a different magic uh, method called call. So you saw how we can use the get to actually get some values from in here and then do something if they don't exist. We've seen how to set a non-existent uh, property. But now there's another function called call. And this one is this one is called when we have we are trying to access a function that does not exist. So get is for properties that don't exist, but call is for functions that do not exist. So for example, here, if I come down here and just try to, let me do this, let me mute all this here. So what I want to do is say db like that, uh, missing function like so. So this is definitely a missing, uh, it's a function that does not exist in here. And so I'm trying to call it here. So let's see what exactly happens when I do that. So if I refresh the page, you see that it tells me un, uh, uncaught error. It's a fatal error Call to undefined method missing function. Okay, so well and good. But the thing is, if I add a function in this class and this function is going to be uh, it's obviously a public function. And this function is uh, core, double underscore and say core like this. Now core takes two arguments. So the first argument is the method you're trying to call that does not exist. And the other one is the argument. So we're just going to put a shortcut and say args like that and save. So core method, so this method, th this variable contains this text here, and then args contains whatever arguments I will put inside here, but since there are none, so this will be an empty array. So this is an array because you can put as many arguments as you want in there. So if I refresh now, I see nothing because there are no errors anymore because core is now handling the issue and because of that, it's not doing anything. That's why we don't see anything there. So this one is a missing function. So what we can do is we can make provision for it in here. So you can tell it to run a very specific thing depending on uh, what has happened. So here I can use the, the switch statement here, okay? So switch is like an if statement. If something is like this, then do this and so on. So here I'm trying to see a way to make use of this. So if I say, for example, case is missing function like that. So what I want to do here is just to print out uh, what arguments are in there. So I just say print our args like that. Okay. Okay. So if I now refresh, you see that there's an empty array there. So what's happening here is that there's a switch statement here, which is choosing what uh, method, uh, what function here to call, what method to call here, or what where to go depending on what's there. And then there's a default here for when somebody calls something we don't know and then we just echo this one here we can say echo uh, can't find method something like this so if i change it a little bit and just add it to there what do we get you get can't find method okay so this is just as useful as using get but it's better because if you remember very well, we had to set this one in order to use the get because the get can only get one argument in there. But here we can have an unlimited amount of arguments while the method is here. We can even ignore the method if you want, but we can put as many arguments as we want. So for example, let's say you, uh, uh, let's say you have a database, right? Now, inside your database, you have some data. 
and in there there are a lot of um, uh, what's this a lot of columns yes so now you want it to be able to get uh, a column to to get a particular record depending on a specific column now normally what you would do in this case you'd create uh, as many functions as there are columns right because for example if you want a function that will get using the id so you create a function saying uh, get by id for example so let's just uh, do this a function get by underscore id like this okay and then you put in the id there like so so this is a valid function uh, and would work and then when we get here we would call it by doing this and say get by id and then you put the id in there like this and then what does it do it will return the the id so let me just use get data here so that we get the whole thing actually i can use this right here see what's here exactly what's here this is what i want so i'll copy that and then bring it over into here so in here rows is equal to this get data so we get that data there and then we go through it and then we are looking for name so now we are getting by id we know this definitely we are getting by id so there's no need to use name here we will just use uh, the word id the text id like that and then this find is no longer there this one is just id now because that's the one we are passing there so we are comparing that if id is set and id is equal to this id we've provided then return that row so this is simple and straightforward we are not even using the call function here we're just going directly to get by id there okay so i just want to show you that this portion of the thing works so let's come here get by id2 and then if i now refresh the thing is i need to print this out it's returning the data but we are not doing anything with it so i will refresh and there you go now because it looks like that this is why i usually use pre tags here because it tends to look more readable more human readable so you see this one is id2 so if i get one with id1 like this there we go id1 and then if i get another one with id4 you get the picture now this is working just fine but now imagine here we are telling it to get by id now imagine i want to get by a different column maybe i want to get by name i want to get by gender and i want another function to get by age so what would happen normally is i would have to create all those functions one by one get by id get by gender get by this and then by the end of the day i'll have a problem because if in case i decide to change how get by id works or how any of these work i'd have to go through each function to change how they work which becomes a problem and then on top of that if i add an extra or maybe i add 10 uh, more of these columns then i'll have to add 10 more functions to do exactly the same thing so at the end of the day the the class will become redundant so there's an easier way to do this of course so here what we will do is just create a function which will say get by right so we just say get by and then we will remove that and then here we'll just say uh, column and then the identifier which is this one or we'll call it find just for simplicity i guess so i'll change it here to find and then i will change id here to column like this so whatever column we give whatever find we give and then get data okay so everything else remains the same now what we will do is when we come here we'll just ask the question now uh switch cannot work in this case because um, i'm trying to see 
the if statement will be if the method contains the words get by. So we will remove this, unfortunately. This only works if you have very specific values. So I'll say if method. Now I'm looking for a string string here. String string like that. The haystack is inside method. That's where we are looking. And the needle is get by like this. Okay. So this is what we are looking for. If string string, if this is true, then we go into in deeper like that. Otherwise, we will echo down here and say could not find the method. Like this. Okay, so once this is there, all we need to do now is string replace, right? So I'm just going to say column, column is equal to string replace. So we are going to replace what we are searching for is get underscore by underscore, and then replace that with an empty string. And what is the subject? Column. No, it's a method. Okay, so once we have that column, then now we can call this get by function right here. So I'll copy this and do that. Get by. So of course we should not forget the this at the beginning. Say this, like so. Get by, and then the column, and then the the find is one of the arguments. So I'll just copy this and put the very first argument there like this. Yeah, so this should work uh, just fine. So let's recap a little bit. So here what happens? So we don't need this anymore like that. So what I want here is to get by ID. Oh, actually, yes, get by ID like this. And then this is the variable. So at this point, if I say get by ID, what will happen is once I send this in there, the get by part, this part is going to be removed. Only what remains is the ID. And then that part is used as the column to find this item there. Okay. So let's give it a shot and refresh. Could not find that method. Okay. So get by ID. Where is this? Could not find that. So this is where the problem is. So if in the string method get by. Yeah, this should actually work. So why isn't it working? Okay, so let me try this again. So there's the haystack and there is what we are finding. Okay. All right. So at this point, what I will do is let me echo the method so that I see what it contains because I don't know why it's. Uh... So it's called get by ID. So correct. Get by ID. So string string method get by. Okay, so what I will do is let me do this. Let's do a var dump here. I have no idea why this is not working as it should because this is a simple thing. So string nine get by ID. Yeah. Okay, so I think things are working. It's just that it's even after going through here, it's still going through there, right? So. The problem I'm having here is that I'm not returning any data type here. So I guess that's where the problem is. So here I should put the return button so that it returns with that data in mind. So refresh and there we go. So you see now I am getting by ID four. So let me get by ID two like this and then I retrieve. So you can retrieve information from the database like this. But uh, don't worry, because we're going to do actual practical examples with the database much later. 
So the reason I am using this as my database is because I don't want to com complicate things, yes? Now, imagine I want to get by name. So the advantage of this system we've created is that all I need to do is just change that to get by name, like this. And then here I will put the name that I want to get by. That's Peter. So let's try John. And there we go. Now I have John. So I can get by age. Yeah. 25, maybe. Something that doesn't exist. And then could not find that data. 24, maybe. There we go. We have that data. So as you can see, you can use the core function to actually um, automate your system. So we intentionally call functions that don't exist, but then once we get here, we examine what they are, strip them apart, and do something with that information that is provided. So keep in mind that these arguments are an array, so you can cycle through them using for each in case you want to have a system that um, uses more than one of these to find the data. Maybe you want to find by age and you can say something like find by age and then find by uh, something else. Okay, so hopefully you have learned something with core. The only thing you should take away from this is that core is run or is induced by the class whenever somebody tries to access a method that does not exist. And so instead, you get call to run. All right, so I will see you in another tutorial.